just got a bed spread that looks like his wallpaper. Looks like Dan Smith looking at two girls, one cup. Ew. <laughs> <laughs> Have you seen two girls, one cup, Anthony? Uh, I know I didn't make it past the um, the whole part after it went into a cup. <laughs> you know, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I knew I knew what I knew what was going to going down. So you know, what I'm saying I'm just. You know, back in my uh, teenage years, I could watch some shit like that. As an adult, no. <laughs> I'm just yeah, like, the opposite, the fuck, man. <laughs> who the fuck would do that? Like, I'm sitting here, like, and then they had one guy in a cup or some shit, and he stuck like a screwdriver in his dick hole. No. Oh. <laughs> oh, I gotta watch that. <laughs> yeah, that was. How that do you? Uh uh. That's called a that, that that one's um <laughs> that one's pretty bad. And and I don't know why you would do that to yourself. In the back? Yes, yes, my flower <laughs> wallpaper, yes. No, I'm just right. saying, that video with the screw, <laughs> screwdriver in the dick that have that flowery wallpaper in the back. Well, that's uh, it. I don't... <laughs> I went on a Tinder date man. once, and this guy, like, opened this sex drawer, and he's like, look, he's like, uh, you know, when we advance to the next level, like, I like these okay. these things down my <laughs> pee hole, and I was like, I gotta go home. I gotta, go. I gotta get the fuck out of here. The guy showed sounding. you on the front. He's fuck it. Let's get it out the way. Um, <laughs> yeah, I attract the best, the best candidates over here. How did so. you get to that drawer on the first date? That means, damn, must have been a good conversation. Tinder. Huh? Tinder. Yeah, that's definitely a Tinder. <laughs> yeah, that's how I find my my peak selection. That's what I'm like I'm, like I'm fresh. I was a, I'm an impatient guy, so like Tinder didn't work for me because I'm like, if I just swiped right. And I can't Tinder's talk to super, her. super, like, fast. Only for the women. If you swipe <laughs> on me, then we match. That's how it works, right? I mean, POF yeah. was the easiest one. You just talk to a messenger oh, yeah. regardless. Look, this is what I'm all about. I know you're going to see it. You're going to respond regardless. Tinder, you got to actually match with the person before you can yeah. respond to them. So, I mean, uh, like. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah, I know a woman's, a woman's <laughs> Tinder account damn near has 6,000 the first day. <laughs> <laughs> you know, the odds of you making this, like, winning the lotto. So, I mean, you know. <laughs> All right. Uh, welcome to the Gag on This Podcast. Check out the episode description for the show and guest social media. Check out our website, gagonthispodcast.com. Email us <laughs> if you want to be a guest or you want to send right-wing literature. I'll take it. Gagonthispodcast at gmail.com. Like and follow our Facebook page. Subscribe to our YouTube channel uh, to watch the recording and hear the episode two days before it is released. I am Big Nick. I'm joined by my Portuguese lover that is Rob. What's up? Joined by the Italian stallion that is Danny D. What, what? We got Sacramento Poet Laureate Sharon. Hello. And we have guest. Would you prefer your real name or your, your rap name? Uh, you can go by both of you, real. Uh, I am government? Ghost Rider, Anthony Burrell, whatever. <laughs> All right, Anthony Burrell, <laughs> a.k.a. I am Ghost Rider. That Woo-hoo. works. <laughs> glad, to have, yeah, glad to be here with you guys, man. <laughs> yeah, I'm glad we could uh, finally make this work. Before we get into it, though, I do want to take a moment to give Sharon his props, man. I am Vic Ping Tameter. Two episodes of his interview with Brandon Leak, who, if you do not know, was the, well, is the only poet ever to be featured on America's Got Talent and get the golden mm. buzzer. So big yeah. ups to you, buddy. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Nice. Definitely. Yeah, that means uh, Sacramento Radio needs to take a page out of our book. We're interviewing people before they even know they exist. (laughs) Now you're trying. All right. So, Anthony, I do want to – I'm from Morgan Hill. Okay. Uh, Rob is from uh, Fremont. Hayward. Hayward. Same thing. Fremont. Um, (laughs) Ron's from Fremont. You're from Oakland now. I am right. from Morgan I'm from Hill. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Not even the Bay Area. Yeah. <laughs> I'm from, you know, I'm from a little bit of Fuck Fremont, yeah. Union City, and Oakland. You know, I've been, yeah. I've been, you know, part of everywhere. Um, my family moved out of Oakland when I was about seven, and we moved to Fremont. But you know, we still have family there, so I'm like, I'm, I'm spread out because I was everywhere during that time. What high school did you go to? Out to James Logan. Oh, you went to Logan? Oh, you went to Union City then. What are you talking yeah. about? <laughs> you went to Union City. I, I went to Union City in my um, seventh grade year. So okay. like the majority of my stuff was in Fremont okay. from the very, very beginning. But, you know, yeah. I, don't, I don't understand this. Like, you can't rep you from there. If I live there, I'm repping it. Yes. So, you know, it's Bay Area, pretty much everything. Isn't that like East Bay? That's not even really Bay Area. 
What? Oh, here what we go. What the fuck are you talking about? <laughs> oh, <South laughs> here we go. It's got no. bay in the bay. game? Oh, here we go. If the water touches your city, you yep. part of the bay, period. Yeah. Yeah. San Jose mm. all the way to Fairfield. All right, I don't so, care what anybody's city. All right. so, so that means Morgan Hill is not the bay. No. I wouldn't no. consider Morgan Hill the bay, oh, really. Son of a bitch. <laughs> That sounds like some rich ass white city that you're it's from. Bay-ish. So, I mean, <laughs> you know what? Hill. It's like a Bay cousin because it touched yeah. San Jose. You know, yeah. what I'm I live close to Morgan Hill right now. I'm in South San Jose, so like, oh, okay. it's not. It's only one exit down the street. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, you could consider it the Bay still. If you want to really be, think about it. It could be the play cousin of the Bay area. If sure. you get a radio <laughs> station, so you get 106 KML with static, you know, you still could claim it. <laughs> oh yeah, that's what we did. Emil, still claiming. Nice. <laughs> yeah, because that's a big consternation. Uh, people think I'm not from the Bay. Morgan Hill is now very ritzy. It wasn't when I lived there. Okay. Really? I'm from the streets. I'm from the streets. No, you're of not. Morgan Hill. No, you are not. She's a Morgan Hill. Okay. No. Fuck you guys. It was, it was tough living. <laughs> you in? No. All right. Um. So I do want to ask you, Anthony. You performed with Jerry Law, correct? Uh, yes. Jerry's a very good mentor of me, man, for me, you know. Um, so, I mean, quick story long. I've been doing, I mean, I've been a funny class clown all my life. And um, actually, RIP to my little cousin, Ray Green, he was a uh, um, very, me and him used to be like the black sheep of the family when we have family um, parties and stuff. It's like, we just take it beyond. And people be like, okay, that's enough. But for us, it's not. We're going to keep on pushing you know so like we kept on going he passed away a little bit under a year ago in the motorcycle accident but like he really pushed me to be my comedian self and he always wanted to do like comedian stuff with the family because we have quite a few characters in our family but um jerry law see me um like i met jerry law when i was about to perform for a family friend and um i was nervous because i never did stand up before music is easy because when you're on stage doing music you don't have to uh, worry about what people are feeling or anything else. You know, I'm going to do my song. If you like it, I don't care. If you like it, if you don't like it, I don't care. You know, I'm saying I don't read your features. I just get off the stage and do about my business. Comedy, you know, you got to be ready. <laughs> so, I mean, I was very nervous, even though I was doing it in front of a lot of family, friends and everything. But um, Jerry Law calmed me down. Um, Jarrell Parker, also another comedian from Vallejo, he calmed me down. You know, so they kind of gave me a little pet talk. Actually, Mario Hodge was doing very well in the comedy industry with Jerry. Is um also gave me some pointers and everything else. And I'm like these dudes, like I didn't even know these dudes, but my mom knew them, and she's like, "Oh, those are big guys right there. They they put the town on the map, you know. They do a lot of stuff." So I'm like, "All right, so these dudes are somebody. I'm gonna listen to them and shut up." But yeah, man, they buy me, they put me out of my shell, and like I did a few shows with them. And I look to do more with them, but 2020 has been pretty bad right now. So like everybody's about to bust out their bubble, then out of nowhere we got locked down. But um. <laughs> Very good people, man. <laughs> now, you did comedy in Oakland and in Berkeley, correct? Right. The Repertoire Theater in, in, on the borderline of Berkeley and Oakland, yeah. Now, I was shocked because you did, <laughs> I think it was the one in Berkeley. You did 30 minutes? I was, it's about, it clocked in about um, 17. And funny story about that, I was only supposed to go six. And uh, <laughs> I had a few drinks in me. And, you know, I just started wilding out. And I just got on the road. People were laughing. So I'm like, all right, they're keeping me on. And then, like, when I ran out of gas, I kind of called Jerry out. I'm not supposed to bring out the next host. You know, they got a host for that. But, you know, that's how you can see that. It was my first time. And I kind of be like, yo, Jerry, where you at, man? It's time to get on stage. <laughs> <laughs> and then, like, when I'm watching the video, it's like, damn, that's not even half the set I wanted to do. I had, like, more. So I was like, I'm ready for my special now. <laughs> like, it was a good night to celebrate, you know? But You, uh, <laughs> you and Danny D share something because Danny D's done uh, shows with Jerry. Oh, I yeah? Have. Yep. Was it Tommy T's or what? It, it wasn't the Tommy T's. I've done two shows with yeah. him and Tommy T's. Um, he is just um, astounding. Like, I, I normally don't take <laughs> advice just from anyone, but, uh, like, yeah. the way he gives his advice, you could tell it's sincere, it's genuine, and he just he genuinely wants to see people do well. And he'll, you know, give you a chance. Yeah. He'll sit down and talk with you. He's hella down to earth. He's hella humble. He's nice as shit. That man, that man is like... Like he's in hell, he's not even in earth, he's below it, you know what I'm saying? Like he's so he's so nice, yeah. you know what I'm saying? Like people be like, Oh, he's nice. What do you mean by I'm saying, man? He's nice, man. Like he's he's flawless. Like his comedy for, routine yeah. is for one, like gets you. You know, like um he just a clowning guy that's tell you some real shit though. You know, like he um he was locked down for a minute. He'll tell people, you know, this is what 
I was doing before this. And, you know, then he tells yeah. how he changed his life. And, like, you can't do nothing but root for the guy because, I mean, look right. at him. Because, I mean, he's doing nothing but rooting for you as well. You know what exactly. I mean? Exactly. So, like, and he, and he, won't, he won't shit on you to get to the next level like a lot of people yeah. in the well, past and- would do. There's hell of fake people in this industry. So like, yes, just to meet someone with his, you know, he's he's a pretty big name. So like, just to meet him and he's genuine and he's real, like that's really hard to come by. It is, so, man. And you know, yeah. I said it's a blessing that he taught me. You know, say I'm the rookie coming in yeah. asking for help, and he just said, "Look here, man, come over here, have a drink. Yeah. Just go out there and do you." You know, what I'm saying it's a lot easier said than done, but I mean. <laughs> Just go out there. Do I mean like your first time on stage? You probably were shitting bricks at the point, you know? Because I mean, I get up there. I don't know how to even oh, it's stress the class. I still am sometimes. So I still am horrible. <laughs> yeah, you know, I mean, you yeah. get up. I bombed. I bombed when I went through some things on one day right before my show, and it just I couldn't clear my head, and I bombed. And I'm like, man, this is what they talking about. And I was just like, wow. And Mario's like, I mean, if you, you don't bomb, somewhere? you're not doing well. <laughs> right. I mean, I rather yeah, not do well than bomb, bomb though, because well. that. The, the bomb, the bomb feeling is like, God damn, y'all not laughing at that? That's just funny. <laughs> now, I, I even practice with my girl before I go on stage. You know what I'm saying? She don't laugh. I'm like, nah. Your girl's gonna lie to you. This shit's no. She won't lie to me. She tell me the truth, like yeah. straight up. Yeah. You know, she's been she's been the number one motivator for me right now because like I got unmotivated for music and comedy, and she was like, you know what? You just gotta push yourself and do what you know you could do, you know what I'm saying? Just regroup. And like, ever since she like, she's been the number one soldier, like number one fan. A lot of people say they girls are they number one fans and they'd have nothing to prove it. Like my girl pushes my shows, pushes my tickets. She sits there in the crowd, records it. One day I didn't invite her to a show and she was upset because she wants to push and everything. I was like, whoa, 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 I didn't invite you like that because I don't want you to be there. A lot of people that start you know. comedy that are in relationships uh, end up being single by the end of it. So, I mean, that's awesome that you have someone that supports you because most oh, yeah, people can't gonna, handle it. I drop comedy before I drop her because I know for sure she's a solid one and she's the one for me, you know. Aww. I mean, I've been in a lot of, you know, past experiences. You're like, you know what you got when you got it, you know. And I won't yeah. let comedy or music stop that. But like that just tells me she knows too much about you. So you know, <laughs> you can't let her go now. She knows too much about you. <laughs> <laughs> That's my best friend, you know. <laughs> hey Rob. No, oh, you're so yeah. mushy. What are you eating? Uh, a Kona ice. Let me see. Let me get up. Oh. Kona oh, ice. There it is. Oh, so it's a From the ice cream man. Yeah, they uh, came by. Oh, were you like the little? No, it's like the was. same ice it down in your son? Yeah, exactly. So I got yeah. a seven-year-old kid, so he like shit his pants, went crazy. So <laughs> <laughs> I run out there every time I hear got the ice cream man. Six dollar cone of ice. What a fucking ripoff. Man, the ice cream yeah. man don't even come down my street, man. He always got a whistle at him. <laughs> Ours is I a be golf cart. I be wondering too, but you see the basketball hoops. We live in the court. You see the basketball hoops down there. There's kids down here. The dude yeah. just goes straight. And I'm like, look, man. You know, so I'm not going to buy nothing every day, but my, you know, so I got three kids. We buy something every once in a while, slide through. Because my kids don't really get, they, especially being stuck in the house all the time. I need to get them something to go out for, you know? Yeah, but you today's can... kids, it's crazy. Like, nobody goes outside anymore. Everybody stays in on an iPad. I do. Well, Rob's, Rob's been doing stuff with his kid a lot lately. Like, they are, they do lightsabers, PVC, Eatings and uh, <laughs> torture. You want to know what that means? He's a good dad. <laughs> no, I'm a shitty dad. I want to fucking You're not a shitty kid. dad. Well, that's why you're <laughs> oh, doing don't, stuff with him. Don't go Chris Benoit now. <laughs> I mean, oh, no. damn. No, Nick, I know Nick saw the post earlier just a, like an hour ago, man. Yeah. Somebody posted it because of uh, what Will Smith might be going through or something. <laughs> but the kids, the kids not, what did it say? The kids wishing Tupac was alive or something so their mom could be happy. I'm like, oh, no. We're we going to have to, you know you're what? Not- you don't know what I will up. rent a spot for y'all to live at. <laughs> y'all ain't living up in here though. Danny, uh, so apparently Jada Pinkett Smith had an affair. Really? Um, but With supposedly, Duke? well, no, the the whole I um all eyes on me. They made it seem like there was an affair, but I just watched that on Saturday for the first time, so I know now what you're talking about. Yeah. yeah so <laughs> now I guess they're trying to say that the Smiths have like an open relationship. Well, I mean, they said that for years. Yeah, yeah. So, I mean, you know. Yeah, they've said that for a long time. It's, it's Hollywood, man. Once you get a Hollywood wife, it's over for you. Like, yeah. you got everybody on her and everything else, you know. Like, I can't see a sex scene with my girl with another dude as an actor, like George Clooney or somebody. I'm like, look, 
<laughs> we got to we got to get a double right here. Y'all gonna have to leave, just fade the scene out or something, man. Ain't, this shit ain't going down. You shouldn't go to work with her then. Fuck that. It's like you stay at home. You stay at home. Me and George are getting it on. See, <laughs> Don. We're gonna we're gonna fight. Need some stunt yeah. cunt. Stunt cunt. cunt. <laughs> Love it. Love it. Be like a duck with the two the two pussies. There you nah, go. nah, nah, nah. That shit ain't going down. No, I mean, I mean how do you how do, do you rebound from that? You know, as a comedian, my you know my salary is somewhere between maybe sixty thousand from my regular job, and then you got this millionaire dude and everything else, and you just like you start looking him up on the internet, see what he got and everything else, and then your girl gonna be like, you know what? Why am I with you? Like, hey, that was just a movie, right? Y'all not really, <laughs> y'all not really going at it no more. Like, we got to fight now. Yeah, I'm just gonna keep my mouth shut on that one because I believe in prostitution. Uh, but you know, neither here nor there. Neither here nor there. You want to pay for some services? Let's go. Is sex still forty like everybody say it is? I know y'all had to drop y'all. It's no, like I, right now. No, but like hundreds and hundreds of dollars, not forty dollars. That's, that's another thing I don't get. So why are these dudes out here paying? So much money for like two hours. Like, why? Oh, does he not know what I do? He doesn't know what I do, you no. guys, huh? Okay, man. Oh, here it comes tell, him. <laughs> Sharon, tell him what I do for a living. Yeah, right. Sharon, get off your goddamn phone. God damn it. <laughs> you, you interview Brandon Leak and you're like, I'm, I'm so much oh. better than gag on this. No, I, <laughs> <laughs> Very gagger, no more. You can't be replaced. Ow. Jesus. That is true. Drop okay. Uh, okay. Danny D is a sex phone operator. They still got those? <laughs> That's everybody's <laughs> response, yes. So I charge it's, by the minute, and guys call me like fucking crazy. And business oh, is good. So how much does it cost per minute? Let me ask. $1.89. $1.89. All right. To so raise like that price just, up. Right? In, in like elementary school, we used to see the 1 800 numbers on the yeah. state network, and they'd be like $3.99 a minute. Yep. And I'm just yeah. thinking to myself, like, who the fuck is paying that? Like, a, a lot of guys. I, I, I believe it. If you, look at the, if you look at the porn industry, a lot of guys are paying for OnlyFans and everything else. So I suggest, you know, you yeah. would talk to a live person, but do they? Do they talk to you and after they get their nuts, just click automatically or do yeah. they stay on the phone yeah. with you? Yeah, no, they hang up automatically. Well, it depends. Oh, <laughs> Some guys call to cry, other guys call to jerk off, but the guys that jerk off hang up automatically as soon as they come. They're done. No, That's because so they, they cheap as shit. They're like, hold on, I can't get this next minute in there. Hold on. <laughs> but we're on the phone for like an hour, hour and a half, like to the point of where I'm like, I don't want to talk to you anymore. So Damn, yeah. on an hour? Jeez. I don't see how you yeah. can do it all the time. Like you go to the same routine. What are you doing? I'm laying here, sitting here. And then you just gotta go to the hang up with that one. You gotta do the same shit over again, or what? They have a certain fantasy, or what? Everyone wants to <laughs> yeah. fantasy. Yeah, one Some, guy. Somebody called. You said somebody called to cry. Someone <laughs> called to cry, and someone basically oh, yeah. told oh, her to yeah. be a guys, dragon. Guys, yeah, someone told me to be a dragon once. Um, a hey. lot of guys call and want me to be their mom. Uh, Ooh, you funny. know, just some just some weird shit. That sounds very Catholic-like right now. <laughs> 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 hey, they they need to go to the they need to go to the church and just talk to the priest. They trip. Oh, yeah, hey, no, don't mind. take away my business. Hey, I just don't don't say, never mind. Get your money. Get your yeah. money right. <laughs> yeah. Hey. Get your money right. I'm not even mad. I mean, shit. <laughs> I don't, I don't know if I can sit there for eight hours and doing it, but then again, your best thing to do is keep somebody on the phone, and you could talk for a long time if you're a comedian, so, yeah, you know, yeah. more power to you on that. Well, and I put them on speakerphone, and I take calls in front of my friends, like, Nick's heard a bunch of calls, and, uh, you know, Danielle's heard some calls, and, like, I'm, and like, shut up, you guys don't laugh, like, because I just make them, I make fun of them all the time. So uh, if a yeah, guy if a guy's asked you to be a dragon, yeah, <laughs> like, yeah. I'm definitely oh. gonna put his ass on blast. <laughs> right? Yeah, it's pretty. I, t I went on a safari once with a guy, and I like was tired of talking to him, so I was like, "Look, here's a lion. He ate you. We're done." And I hung up. I was done. I was fucking done. Wow. Oh, I that thought you right. were saying you went on a physical safari. I was like, no, no, no. Like, like in his mind, you know, in his mind, we were going on a safari, but I I had shit to do. I got tired of talking to him. So I just had I mean, to be by a lion. He's paying. I don't give a shit. I just do, man. I don't the customer's always head. right. Be a dragon. <laughs> Roar. <laughs> blow some fire. <laughs> I just, I just got to ask, though. You don't, you don't just graduate 
to a dragon. You know what I'm saying? You got to start somewhere else. So in real life, he probably didn't fuck plenty of dogs and cats. I'll tell you that right now. Like, he's like, I want to try some new shit. What's up yep. with a dragon? Probably. Probably. Because I don't even... Yeah. I, I was... I, I've heard guys fuck animals, but, you know, that's a whole different... Yeah, that's a that's a completely that's different podcast Nick. you're going to be on. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's yes. gag on this, etc. Bestiality. <laughs> good. Good. So I do good. want to talk about uh, you are one of the ways you and I started talking was you're a Raiders fan and my my Super yeah. Bowl Town Browns played your Raiders. Yeah. Uh, are you still a the Raiders Browns. fan? Hey, shut up. You know, we have the you know, best. it takes what it takes a lot to be a Raider fan, man. Oh, yeah. Well, are you still a Raider fan now that they're the I, Las I am, Vegas? I am still a, I'm still, uh, currently, yes. Currently, yes. You know, um, I'm a hometown native when it comes uh -huh. to anything. Like, you see the A's. You know, I rep everything Oakland off the bat. Um, a lot of people that are Raider fans say they'll never be, like, Niner fans and everything else. And that's true. I would never physically, like, just be out there banging Niners and everything else. But if the Niners go to the Super Bowl, it's home field. It's the, you know, it's where you live. You don't want your spot that you live to get bad love. But regardless for the Raiders, um, I'm a Raider fan, but I heard there's a, uh, an organization trying to bring back Oakland football. If it's an expansion team, I'll drop my Raider colors in a heartbeat and be Oakland. Wow. There yeah. is no such thing as loyalty when your team leaves your city twice. Yeah. I mean, at what point are you allowed to just have to be a diehard fan and they sit up here and pretty much tell your city, fuck you, we're doing this. Because, I mean, I don't want to hear that Oakland had chances and everything else. If I want to go buy a house in Las Vegas right now, I'm not going to go to the mayor or the governor and be like, you need to pay for my house. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? You're a business. You need to pay for your own shit. If you don't have the money to pay for your own shit, you need to find a different way, which you did, and you left the city. You know, that's the way – that's pretty much where we stand. So if you want to go root for another team, so what? You go root for another team. You know what I'm saying? Like – there is no such thing as a diehard when your team leaves and they throw that, oh, we're a nation, we're everywhere to fucking nope. bypass that shit. You know, a lot of people lost their jobs, even working at that stadium and security as um, food vendors, um, mm -hmm. all kind of different things. Even the person that sells me my season tickets had to move to a different job. So, I mean, it affected a lot of people. And, I mean, when you look at Nevada, Nevada needs to worry about their schools they need to worry about their education program. Only the private schools do good in Nevada. You know what I'm saying? Their mm -hmm. education is horrible. They're crowded. Classrooms. When you drive into Vegas, you know? that stadium is the first thing you fucking see. And it's, it, I mean, yeah. I've only seen the oh, outside of it, but it is so nice. fucking big and it's beautiful. And I'm like, I don't even nice. like football, but I'd probably go there. It's yeah. nice. You know what I'm saying? Don't get me wrong. I like Vegas. It's huge. It's nice. They probably it's, spend millions on that shit. But I mean, as a whole Ill, yes. country, our priorities are wrong right now. Yeah. Totally. And you can see. I mean, you see it every day in the Bay Area. There's homeless everywhere. So I There's mean, homeless um, everywhere here. Yeah. And everywhere. for the hell of it, fuck Mark Davis. But <laughs> yeah. <laughs> there you go. Who the fuck's Mark, Mark Davis? Davis? Hey. It's the owner of the, he's Al Davis's kid. Oh, I know the Al guy Davis, because that fucker horrible, would never die. <laughs> Al Davis just thought he was the godfather after a while. I you mean, know, I don't know, I don't know the whole business in between, you know, see, I'm not going to say fuck Mark Davis, but I'm going to say fuck is, Mark where Davis. do you get your haircut done at? That's all I want to know. Fuck got Mark Davis with his dad's corpse's dick. You feel me? Oh, damn. Oh, damn. Despise that man. <laughs> well, Why um, such the hate? <laughs> <laughs> well, you're you're an A's fan, and uh, Rob yeah, I am Rob A's loves fan. the A's. Oh yeah, you know what the A's man? Like, I grew up on Ricky Henderson. You know what I'm saying? Like that's that's my guy right there. And I, I loved went. everything he did. Then he stole as much bases. Nobody's gonna catch that on that team. Mm -hmm. You know, like it's 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 like like we grew up in such a beautiful year for baseball. Like we could say we saw Mark McGuire, Jose Cansego. I don't care about the steroids. You know what I'm saying? Steroids ain't going to stop you from hitting a fastball. I know plenty of people that are juiced up that can't do anything. Mm. I mean, it's not the – you know what I'm saying? Barry Bonds deserves to be in the Hall of Fame. He's a Giants, totally. and I hate the Giants. So I kind of hate the other side, but I'll go to the games over there because their stadium is much nicer, but we got to be playing the A's. <laughs> but <laughs> Danny, what were you going to say? I'm sorry. I didn't mean to cut you off. No, no, no. you didn't. <laughs> Danny? Oh, I, I uh, went to my first A's game last year. Uh, I got to do comedy oh, there. Yeah. It was fucking oh. dope. Oh, that's and right. You see, yeah. see Carlos. Yeah, yeah, Carlos Rodriguez and I and uh, Artie went up there and we got to do uh, comedy during 
not halftime. I don't know. I don't know. I never went to the oh, baseball the game before. Like seven inning stretch, maybe the yeah. seventh yeah. inning. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and it was pretty cool, man. It was it was a good game. Like the people there were hella cool. We were in like the box seating. It was fucking dope. It was really cool. Well, I'll tell you right now, the A's fans are definitely dope. Like the, nobody has went through more heartbreaks than us right now. <laughs> we so always sure. make it to the playoffs and get whooped in the first round. Like, mm-hmm. nobody's – like, since 89 was, like, the last year where we beat the Giants, you know, we, we did pretty good that year. But we had an earthquake, so nobody got to celebrate. That was a long so, time I mean, ago. Damn. <laughs> so, I mean, <laughs> yeah. that's, like, the last time I really could really, really, really cheer for us, except for, like, the painful years, like, when Detroit took us out and everything. But I can go a whole long about this i'm not gonna do that yeah. just, it's like, like well, talking you... to a buffalo bills fan about <laughs> super bowl losses <laughs> three times <laughs> four. Oh, four who's a somebody's a bills fan here no oh, but it just, just it feels like one, that because all the hard one arthur smith and he just bangs the bills like nothing i tell him every year <laughs> even if you make it to the super bowl you know it's gonna happen you're gonna lose <laughs> god does not like the bills man <laughs> literally, literally. <laughs> Well, um, Danny, Danny brought up a good point. Did you know they do comedy at the uh, A's games? I didn't. So, I mean, like, is that a one-time thing, or is that something that they do often? Uh, well, they do it. Um, they they do it like every game. They, I was gonna they say, have Carlos is doing it regularly during the season, right? Carlos is, Carlos Rodriguez. I'm not sure if you're linked up with him, but like he um he is friends with um like the owner or what whatever the mm-hmm. deal is with the bar there at the seventh yeah. stretch. Um, yeah. And so he got it to where we were doing comedy and it was playing on the projectors on the TVs for the crowd. Yeah, they, they our, definitely kicked yeah. my ass up out of there after the first word. <laughs> <laughs> you, have to, not, you have to be semi-clean. That's what I'm saying. Like, you know, I, I get on stage, I just let it out. You know, like I have a routine, yeah. but I just let it out. And I mean, yeah. I haven't really got into the whole clean comedy thing. And that's why I really applaud all comedians. I'm hella dirty. Like, comedy. Like, you know, I'm so a I can't, dirty round yeah, comic. So. I can't. Not necessarily, they're just the topics I talk about that piss people off. Like, especially going now, you got to really watch what you say. But like me, I don't watch what I say. And that's why I like, What you do know, you talk about? <laughs> everything. Yeah. Let's get into <laughs> it. Everything. everything. Okay. I mean, rather you talk about black mm-hmm. jokes, white jokes, gay jokes. Like, I'll say it all. And then people be like, during this time, they're going to try to cancel you. It's like, mm-hmm. oh, you're homophobic. I said, look here. I, a lot of my jokes talk about fat people. I'm fat as hell. So, I mean... <laughs> Am I going? I sit up here and I laugh about it. As a fat person, I'm not heard about it. If you heard about it, then you need to go crawl underneath a rock and go back to it's, like Fraggle Rock with it. You know, but, it's comedy. Fraggle Shut the rock. fuck up. Exactly. I can say whatever the hell I want. Yeah, that Fraggle Rock means like you know the little elementary shit where you can't get told anything because sticks and stones may break your bones, but words never hurt you type stuff. You know, like we talk <laughs> about everything. You can't be that soft. Like you know what not to say. Like you say a race joke, you got to make sure it's not really, really racist, you know? So, I mean, <laughs> that's how I feel. But if you say anything, like, can you imagine if Bernie Mac was alive right now, what they'd do to him? I mean, just after his Kings of that's Comedy. Was, Kings of Comedy was one of the funniest um, comedy stand-up films I ever watched in my life. And to this day, I still watch it. And I would say right now, if Bernie Mac was alive to this day, they would crucify that man. Especially talk about his little nephew when he said the, the um, milk and cookies part. Yeah. <laughs> that's considered that's considered that's considered uh bullying and everything now i mean like it's just it's just gone too far with the me too movement to me personally you know but, i feel every i feel everybody should have rights and everything and yes but i mean when certain people talk about certain things turn it off if you don't like it if something offends right. you turn it off there ain't no reason to go after the people you know, you know uh there was a comic recently who posted something on her page and i don't I don't dislike this comic, but I don't really like her. Um, anyways, she posted something about this like live topless comedy show we're looking for female comics, and she was like, why would oh, yeah. a female comic do it? So I signed up for the show just to piss her off, and I sent her the <laughs> link, and I was like, I signed up July 8th. You want to come out? And uh, I was like, I'm sorry you're not comfortable with your body, but the rest of us are. And then, uh, you know, I went about my way, but like she fucking, I was like, you're not even... Why are you just bagging on shit to bag on shit, you know? Like, what? Do you, why are yeah. people doing that? Like, who's got time for that? Yeah, I mean, so know, now I'm doing a topless comedy <laughs> show. It's people be great. got time. People have time to be petty for sure, you know. Yeah, I can't handle and, it. And just for uh, scientific research, where's this uh, comedy show at? It's on Zoom. <laughs> <laughs> it's on Zoom. Oh, it's on Zoom. Zoom. It's a fundraiser. Uh, it's a fundraiser. Um, I'll send you the link. Yeah, I'm going to tell my girl to watch, you know. That's all. Yeah, tell your girl to watch. Sweet. Yeah. 
Hey, Sharon, you were going to say something? Well, I'm pretty uh, excited. No, I was going to say about when you were talking about Bernie Mac and stuff. Um, no, Bernie, uh, you're right. With his um, stuff he had before, he would have been crucified. But, you know, since he got the show, in, the Bernie Mac show and stuff, he started getting a little, I ain't going to say soft, but he kind of got easy and comfortable, you know, even with his weight. Started really just, start taking the the. the so Bill say he's right. sold out. Well, well no. I mean, <laughs> ain't, no, ain't no such thing as a sellout. Like, people right. don't understand. Bill Cosby. If, if you're gonna He's give me if you're gonna give me some millions of dollars, a network show and everything else, and you tell me, okay, you can't talk about this, 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 as long as it's not making me look like, you know, not a black man anymore or something else, I'm gonna do it. They're paying for yeah. it. So I'm I not mean, saying I now, wouldn't sell out. I'm just saying some say he would I know, but I say they, they say they say sellouts like they sold their soul and now they're like going a whole different gender. Bernie Mac never stopped black comedy, if you wanna say it is like that, you know. So I mean like I wouldn't consider him a sellout. He just filtered himself, especially for like a TV network. Yeah. So I mean, because he still came. Yeah. I think he had yeah. that show yeah. before yeah. the Kings of Comedy, did he? Or was it uh, during the same time? I mean, I'm, no, I'm not same sure time, I think. Yeah, well, his, no, the show. No, he's actually, the show came like uh, two or three years later because hmm. they actually they actually he actually did t uh, Kings of Comedy, and then after like a year or two, then they actually took all that material he did for that one joke about his kids, about his own nephews yeah. and nephews. And then made a show out of it and stuff. So. Right there you go. That's what they yeah. did. So I mean, he technically still took that routine on the road and had even right. more routines that would be bad if you want to be real <laughs> about it. Yeah. I mean, look at Dave Chappelle. Dave Chappelle came back with the most uncomfortable thing I would guess, especially during his last big stand-up mm. when he was talking about LGBTQ. And I mean, oh, he really, stuff, yeah. he really didn't yeah, care yeah. what the outcome was. It is what it is. It's what I'm rolling with. And I mean, the thing about Chappelle is he makes a lot of good points in his his comedy, you know, like the double standards and what people claim as a double standard. And I mean, I applaud them for using a platform and not, I would say, selling out for what they believe in and keep pushing, you know. Okay. But they tell you, I'm not homophobic, but this is what this is going on. Now you guys claim I'm homophobic, you know. Yeah. Like I have a few Why gay people in my family. It, but... I have friends that are actually gay and I get along with all of them. You know, I meet people at the workplace, you know, that are gay. And I mean, you can't really, I'm saying like, come out and say like faggot this and this and that, because that's disrespectful as somebody calling me the N word, you know, in a way. Right. If they say it, that's more power mm -hmm. to them. But I mean, it's not going to stop me from my jokes and my comedy spot, but my comedy jokes are not going to be anything that will target you to make you feel a certain way that, you know, I'm attacking you. So, I mean, Love that's the one thing people. as a comedian, you got to be able to read your crowd and you got to be able to read people's feelings. And you might think something's funny, but you need to relay that. So, like, if I have a gay joke, I might go to my gay friend and ask him, like, yo, can I say this? And you not take it a certain way or you're going to take it a certain way. And if he tells me the truth, you know, oh, I take it this way. I scratch the joke out, you know. <laughs> so I think that's what a lot of would, us need would to Would you be move. mad? Would you be mad if a white comic said did the same thing to you? Like, hey, let me run this black joke by you. Like, did you find this well, racist or anything? Like, you just ran it by a gay guy. Like, what yeah, you, you know, I'm a different. I I texted you and was like, hey, <laughs> is this okay to yeah. say? Get the point. You know, I'm a I'm a different I'm a different type of person. So like, if a person called me the N word, I laugh at them. Like, you know, a lot of my people won't though. They'd be ready to fight. But like, unless you're not making a direct yeah. threat to me, I'm not gonna want to fight. But there's not that many people that think like that. So as far as, you know what I'm saying, black people get away with telling white jokes all the time. So if a white person says, like, for one, they're trying to go after Jimmy Kimmel right now for doing the little black face thing when he was doing it as a character, though, not doing it as uh, mocking the black community. You know, he was making, yeah. you know what I'm saying, he's doing this one. So there's certain things that you do that would pull this off, you know? So if you say a, a black joke, people are going to come at you regardless because of the times we're in right now. Yeah. So I mean, as a person i wouldn't do that just to bring that a heat onto you but if you got the you know no the fire i was just asking would you suit. be upset if someone ran it by you like if a white if person yeah ran I, wouldn't, it. I wouldn't i wouldn't get upset like okay. you know what I'm saying? I, I laughed at a whole lot of jokes that were about my people that somebody told one of my um i'm not gonna mention mm -hmm. her name but they told me how do you stop black kids from jumping on the bed and i said how he said you stick velcro on the ceiling and i said wait a minute <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? i said wait a minute that. see look you're laughing you're wrong <laughs> I thought about it, right? And I was like, man, I don't get it. And I had my backpack going to school one day and it had Velcro on my backpack and my Afro got stuck to the side. But then I was like, you know what? 
Fuck it you. Was an- <laughs> <laughs> well, see, that's, and that's the issue right there. Is that little, is it going to be either the fuck, the fuck you or is it going to be like, aha, you got me. And then. Why the fuck yeah. can I laugh? I can fucking laugh. You told no, me to no, no, laugh. No, it's, it's not that. Funny. It's just the point. Of, it's, the, it's always a subjective. You know, it's like. Whatever. Yeah, it's like I mean. You said, you gotta, <laughs> When it comes to comedy and this real funny comedy, I think it should be no tags on it. You know, you shouldn't be able to. Right. It should let it let the let the AK fly. It is what it is. Just don't be up there saying some straight up ignorant shit that's facts, and you're trying to make it into a comedian, like black people hanging or something like that. Like that's that's be the points where you're pushing it. You know, I don't talk- know. that part right there. Be, be I'm not talking about you. Fine. I'm just talking yeah. about people that are white comedians. You know, what I'm saying like. You can make jokes, but you better make jokes about everybody. But me, I make jokes about myself a majority of the time. So like 75% of my routine is about me. And then like the last 25, I start dishing out some jabs and see where it goes from there. Sometimes, you know, it, the worst thing is do is you talk about yourself and then you go out after people and then the whole place turns into a library. You're like, damn. You can't, you can't reverse back to yourself because they're not going to care. You're already pissed off the crowd. So, I mean... You just gotta be that's tasteful, true. I suggest. You know? I like how you said, "Let the AK fly," and I'm like, "That's probably <laughs> something you can't say at a school anymore." <laughs> <laughs> Not in Colorado. Yeah, see, but um, see, I'm white, and most school shooters are white, so I can say that. <laughs> I, I don't know if any black school shooters are out there yet, man. But I mean, because their moms be no would beat the shit out of them. <laughs> yeah, I don't understand how come the police arrest those dudes. You know, you just shot 15 kids, let them out, shoot them. You know, that's the one thing. You, that's the one thing I don't understand with this country. Like, a lot of black people get shot by the police. A lot of white people get shot by the police. But the only thing is, they're not, the black people are not armed. And they still get shot. <laughs> it's like the police can't handle these hands. Like, instead of going 12 weeks with a shooting, with a shooting training, you should go with some combat training of fist fighting, you know? Because, I mean, <laughs> when you look at the video of the dude that got killed in um, Atlanta, Brooks, oh, um, yeah. He was beating the hell out of them police <laughs> at first, yeah. you know what I'm saying? But, I mean, it comes to a point now where you're about to get handcuffed. Even though he was impaired, you know, he was drunk, still, the man 18 feet away, you shot him. Instead of, you know, let him go and catch him later, you got his name, you got his car. Why you even chase him anymore? He got to come back. He don't live right there. If he does live right there, you got all his information to go to his house. But yet, they don't handcuff us. They shoot us first, and that's the craziest part. And then, like, I seen one video of a cop shooting somebody and doing CPR with compressions. I'm like, isn't that gonna push all the blood out the wound? Mm-hmm. Like you, we don't really. We watch these movies and when somebody gets shot, all you do is put pressure on the gunshot wound, and you would think that's what you do in real life, mm-hmm. you know. But I mean, you I live try in a society. Hang out with people to get shot, so I mean, I don't know. <laughs> well, you never know when you're. I don't, don't ever want to be put in that situation. <laughs> I'm pretty uh, sure the person that gets shot and not thinking when they wake up in the sorry. morning, I'm going to get shot today around noon. <laughs> so <laughs> we got to do everything before you know, we don't know. Be like, today you know was a good day. <laughs> in 2020, my prediction was I was going to get slapped by a man and then COVID kind of happened. So like, just because I pop off all the time and I'm like, you know what, well, one of these days, a guy's just going to slap me. COVID slapped your ass. That was the- <laughs> <laughs> nice. yeah. And it slapped all of us too, right with it. <laughs> it just went down this, just went down the line. Went <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, I'm going to slap everybody this year. Hold on. <laughs> if it wasn't that bad, then it's fine. It's fine. So, I, I want to get into uh, you also rap, correct? Yeah, I do. I do. Yeah, you did. Uh, you released Swing Out last year. Right. Oh yeah. So yeah, swing out is pretty much me playing homage to a lot of rappers in the Bay Area, and a lot of people don't catch it in my lyrics. But my lyrics are actually names of rappers. If you could, if you could really listen to it, you would hear it. You know what I'm saying? Like, um, I can't even quote this shit right now. I'm so blank minded. <laughs> <laughs> like Master P and E40 and. Um... What's that other guy's name? The guy that seems like I'm a killer fish. I'm a, I had a, I, I gave a homage to Jay Stalin, Filthy that. Rich, um, E40. Mm. Um, <laughs> I had a damn. I can't even quote my own song right now. It's been a minute since <laughs> I actually listened. I'm not one of those. I'm not one of those rappers that listen to their music all the time and all day. You know, so I mean, like, if I'm about to do a show, I got to listen to my tracks a few times. I mean, I made a lot of music in the past, and I don't see how any rapper does it like that. But like me personally, I got to listen to the shit. You know. To let it do go you, again. Do you write like, your I own have, songs? I have my songs, huh? Do you write your own songs? Yeah, I do write my own songs. Oh, yeah. One okay. thing I want to do, a lot of people ask me to be a ghostwriter, and I'm like, that's just my name. 
I'm not going to write for nobody because <laughs> this, like when I do my music, that's me. That's my mm. passion. And I don't want nobody else to spit my passion. You know, this, right. is, this is what I do. Like, so I really don't do that whole, you know, help me out with a line. Like me, it takes me, sometimes it'll take me roughly a month to write a song like that. Some people write songs in a few minutes and I don't, you know, I don't hog them down, but like, did you do it your best? Like, if you're going to write a book and a story, you're not going to write that story in one day. You want that story to be real. You want it to hit all the time. Have you ever noticed people write their music and you listen to a rap song? How many rap songs do you actually listen all the way through? Like, you're the first verse or your favorite verse and you just turn it off after that. You never let it go all the way out. You know, like, I want my song to hit from the beginning to the end. And I can't write something that's going to hit from the beginning to the end all in one day. I just don't have that gift like some people do. But if you listen to a lot of stuff on the radio now, it's bullshit. Oh, yeah. Like, they, uh, repeat, the, they repeat themselves for six bars. Next, you know, the chorus come in, and you're two minutes in, and he hasn't said nothing. That like, shit that my daughter that listens hip-hop. to, this <laughs> trap rap, I'm so fucking over it. Like, I'm over the trap rap. I'm like, I you're never, a white kid in orange bell. <laughs> like, what the fuck you listen to? <laughs> to me, it's all about emo singing, people that claim they be thugs, mm. and they drink promethazine and pop pills all day, and then they die. Like I little mean, peep, little peep. That's the way. Blue face. I fucking hate that shit. I mean, you know, I'm not gonna be mad at them. Get your money. It's a whole different era. Like when we grew up, our parents were like, I don't know what you're listening to. I don't listen to this crap. I said, I understand it. Maybe the music's not for us. You know what I'm saying? Blueface don't even rap on beat, so I don't understand it. You know, but I'm not gonna hate on them. He well, got it's paid. like they don't put any time and effort, like you were saying. They just don't put any time and effort into what they're doing, and now they have auto tune, and it's like you don't even have oh, yeah. to be good anymore. Like. <laughs> Like, fuck, I sound great in auto-tune. Like, it's fucking yeah. bullshit with auto-tune and filters and <laughs> they're rapping like, oh, I ate butter for breakfast. And then they're like, kitchen cabinets on the ceiling. And it's like, what the <laughs> fuck are you saying? Like, Biggie and Tupac and, and other rappers have messages. And like, now these guys are just like, I like to kill rabbits and ride unicorns. And it's like, what the fuck are you talking about? What are you well, saying? Even back in the days, they had a lot of things they didn't say. They're just like, yeah, we're just going with the vote. What was? And you're like, okay. <laughs> And that was back in the 90s, too. So it was just like, okay, well. I mean, was, 90s, 90s rap, like we had a meaning to it. They tell stories yeah. a lot. You know, well, shout out to Slick Rick. That was a oh, nice, you know, back well, he was then. 80s. Story. He was 80s. But. Yeah, he's, he's a, I'm an 80s baby, though, so I could well, say that. Well, you're 80s baby, too. Okay, I'm a baby baby myself, man. I was 85. You're not an 80s so, you know. baby, Sharon. I'm a 70s child. Okay, thank you. Late 70s, but all my, all my growing was in the 80s, so I can say yeah, that. Yeah, so I mean, you know. You know, people that tell stories keeps you ready because you want to hear the end of the story. Oh, yeah. So I'm just talking about pills, the Percocet pills, the Percocet pills, the Percocet pills, the Percocet, uh, huh. Next door, the course <laughs> come in. You're like, what the hell? Come on, man. And popping that pussy, popping <laughs> the pussy. You know, so much you can say. That's why you have people that only last like one hit wonders and everything else. Like, they don't really make it out there because you might have got paid, you know, more That's power that. to you, but your message is trash. You know, that's how I feel. A lot of people ask, did you hear this, blah, blah, blah? So I won't give it a time in my day. My son be playing all kind of emo stuff, and I be like, he's like, oh, that new, um, what's that boy name, man? <laughs> Uzi Vert dropped, right? Like, Uzi oh. Vert dropped. And everybody's jumping. I said, the beat nice? What about this lyrics? He said, you, you understand that? So then I look him up and I see the man wearing a skirt. I'm like, all right, this is not a boy. This is a girl. Um, we don't put labels on things here, Anthony. Let that go. I'm, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm no, it was a, it's it was just, a as my daughter would say, it's not a girl shirt or a boy shirt. It's just a shirt. Why do you have to label it? It doesn't matter. And I'm like, well, because in my day, guys didn't wear skirts or dresses or makeup or fingernail polish. And that's cool well, that you want to you know, do it. But like, you know, it's still a skirt to me. I know a 3X in men's is different from a 3X in women's, so we're going to have to put that down. Yeah. That's true. <laughs> but where you get that shirt? It wasn't from the men's department. Yeah, it was. <laughs> it don't fit. That's unfortunate. Right. So I, I do want to uh, bring something up. Um, and yeah. I, I ha- it's funny. You guys were talking about, you know, running jokes by gay people, running jokes by black people. I actually ran this by a black person, and they said it was okay to talk about. So thank Uh-oh. you, Sharon. <laughs> <laughs> oh god because i read it by him i was watching a documentary you know noisy the music no i don't oh, okay yeah so, no noisy i know noisy. you know all right so they did a documentary and it was about rap scene in oakland um mm-hmm. and they mentioned something that i, I definitely want to bring up and ask your opinion on and sharon you can chime in 
they talked about Easy E or no, G Easy, and they mm-hmm. talked about how he is part of what they are calling the gentrification of rap. Is that <laughs> a thing? Because that's the first I've heard of it. Man, yes. look, I will say. I don't know what they mean by gentrification as meaning like more white rappers coming over trying to take like black rappers jobs out there trying no. to aim for. I think that no. most when I hear gentrification, I think about how, you know, black people are getting ran out of the neighborhoods and white people are taking them over. Like that's what their perception is right now. But you I know, saying like it's okay to wear girls clothes or have your nails painted or have makeup on or, you know. Also, oh, they cross dressing is what they're trying to throw out there. It's no. not just that. No. 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 Go for it, Sean. <laughs> No, the justification what he's basically pointing out is, like you said, there the more um, where it used to be, rap was always talking about the hood, this and this and this. Now you right. got white rappers and stuff coming in, talking about you know not just only drugs, but doing doing whatever they personify as black people to do, and getting more popularity or taking over the um, the imagery and making it more you know crazier or hood. Where black people, where black rappers used to just do what you know, be just like little little Wayne and stuff. Now you got white rappers looking like little Wayne. It's like okay, that's weird. And well, I mean, we look at it as ignorance. It is, you ignorance. know. And, uh, and when I say proposing. when I say ignorance, I mean like if you think black people are only ones that do drugs and do it and they can't talk about it, then you're ignorant because you would think that black people are only ones. So if our people are saying that, there's something wrong with them. Mm-hmm. I'm saying this rap is a culture. It's not a race. So if a white person, or you know what I'm saying, I'm not even sure if G-Eazy is fully white or if he is white. He might be Hispanic too, but I'm not exactly sure on this. Um, but I know one thing, if he's from Oakland or from the area, he's putting it on. What's the problem? You know what I'm saying? The thing is, like, what he raps about is what he raps about, what he feels. Like I said, it's an art. So if you have something that's just one, you know what I'm saying, let's just put it this way, one rail. You're a train and you're on, on, you're on the rails, you're going down. Eventually, your tracks don't have to switch to go to other areas. If you stay on one side, you're not going to end up anywhere. You're going to end up, you know, just at a dead end, and then you're going to be done. As a musician, you have to open up in all genres. The whole object is to get money. So if you got to get some country-style songs going, some hip-hop sounds going, some pop sounds going, then you need to expand. In order to expand, you get a bigger audience, you get a bigger payday. You know, so I have no problem with g Easy rapping around, you know, going everywhere. The thing is, it doesn't. Hip hop may have started with black people and everything else, but it doesn't belong to us when people from other races are growing up in the same environment as us. You know, the hood is not 100% black. It has Hispanics and whites also. And they also have friends that are in the same hood that go through the same shit. Regardless if you think they're privileged or not, what they rap about is what they see and what they feel. It's not like, you know, the old rainbow head boy that's getting clout right now that oh, gosh, got put into so. the. Um, <laughs> That oh, came into a gun and told on everybody is still growing, you know. I mean, that's that's the whole that's that's more of a gentrification type rap I would feel because like mm. if you don't live the drug selling and everything else, and then you just adopt into a gang and then start selling stuff and everything else. That's one thing that's like I would okay. say gentrification to so giving rap a bad you name. Now? You don't have that's, to get gangbanged in. You get adopted no, 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 no. out now. That was, that was, I don't know. I don't know that. I don't say I'm not from New York. That ain't my I'm situation. Just I'm just saying that's, that, that would be more from looking out on the outside, looking in. That's why I would consider somebody hijacking the culture and stealing it, you know? Because mm. no matter what, you, they always say, like, you don't snitch on people. A lot of people in the hood snitch on each other, too, but they don't bring it down. And they go back and talking like they doing big shit, you know? Like, most of these... um hip hop people now are phony, you know? Mm. There will only be a few real cats out there that will say that really about their life, and you can see that they're really about their life, and a lot of them are dead now, mm. and because they're really out there doing it, you know? And a lot of them are in jail, and then a lot of them are past that, and they still talk about it. So, I mean, like, when it comes to, like, real music listening, I don't listen to the, oh, man, I'm dying right now. <laughs> Do you guys see me? Yeah, I don't know what right. the hell. I have, it, I have my iPad plugged up, but it's dying right now. <laughs> oh, no. But, um... But yeah, so um, they, like, I would say, like, Jeezy and Gucci, man. I really feel that they did the stuff that they talked about in their music because, like, it seems real. Plus, Gucci man caught a case for some people trying to come in on his house, you know? But then, like, it, it comes to a point, like, as an artist, why do you want to rap about that? You know? It's like, why do you want to rap about killing people and everything else? You know what I'm saying? That's just not smart. And that's what these kids are doing these days. They're rapping about drugs, sex alcohol and killing people and that's the part of the problem right now like we're trying to get away from 
you know, people genocide. That's what I call it. Because right. that's what we're doing. Well, and, like, it's music. Because this generation isn't actually that smart and they don't really, like, look into education and they don't know what else to rap about. Like, they just know yeah. about, like, sex, drugs, money, whatever, and this fake-ass life, you know, this Kim Kardashian life. That like, yeah. you know, they have, they don't want to like rap about something of importance because they have no fucking idea what's important. Because we, we need to we need to bring back public ass whoopings. That's <laughs> yes. all. So every time I act up in public back in the day, my mama hit me in the store. There ain't no wait till we mm. get home. If you had to wait till we get home, you in for a war. Like I just got a look. I knew now you look. came in. Now you can't even talk to your kids wrong, or you get CPS called on you. So I mean, <laughs> well, you guys, you just, guys talk about you know. Uh, you know, rappers talking about being in gangs and stuff. Del the Funky Homo Sapien, quite possibly the best rapper to come out of Oakland. He doesn't talk Ooh. about that at all. Del, you know the hieroglyphics? Yes. No. Oh, yeah. Hey, he's, you know, he's, 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 um, that's he's real hip-hop. With, um, he's his yeah. cousin with um, Ice Cube. So. Yeah, he that's wrote real, a lot of Ice Cube shit. That's real hip-hop, yeah. though. You know what I'm saying? That's real hip-hop. You don't really hear real hip-hop these days unless you listen to J. Cole. And a lot of I people hate it. on that. J. Cole's yeah, J. Cole. a real good, you know, he's a real good spitter, man. But people don't want to take, see, people so used to listening to junk to get their minds right. When somebody really says something, you're like, oh, it's trash. And then you're going to play it three years from now. I'm like, oh, this dude was spitting. You know? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> now that you finally caught it with your slow ass, you're going to be like, this dude is really spitting. <laughs> that's, that's, that's like, I, I, you know what I'm saying? I Hopefully they'll say with, that about my comedy one day. And I'm doing like, that with Man. two chains. <laughs> oh, yeah, Danny two chains? G, yeah, I'm doing that with two chains right now. Go, if you don't got it with two chains, now you go come. That man been out for a long two time. Two chains? Yeah. I remember when he was with Player Circle? He was out yeah. there for a long time. Like his, you know, what I'm saying he's more like a real hip hop ish camera. You know, camera used to always say those nursery rhyme style yeah. raps, and I wasn't really feeling it. But like two chains come through with a little bit harder of it. And yeah. I could feel it, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, I, I, I represent. I, 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 I give love to Two Chains, you know. <laughs> it took a while. It made me hearty. <laughs> hey Rob, he's veteran now. What's up? Hey Rob. Yes. Rob, uh, when do you when... like Two Chains? <laughs> <laughs> do you like Two Chains? I have no idea. Uh, All right. <laughs> um, what about um? Well, uh, you love Takashi Six Nine because you just hope he dies. Um, yeah. <laughs> well, we have a well, death I got, pool, I got so... news for you. He is gonna die one day. He's on yeah, our but devil it needs list. to be this year. We, we yeah, all, we I don't know about this year. I'm not the Grand Reaper, but all of us are going to die one day. <laughs> and R. So, Kelly. Oh, Please, man. R. Kelly's not going to die. Paul Reiner died. God damn. Hey, man. as much as I love R. Kelly, TP2 is one of my favorite CDs ever. I can't listen to a damn song anymore because I'm, I'm confused. Like, are you talking about a woman of age? No, he's or are you, not. Or are you talking about the nursery? Because I really can't. I really no, can't. Because I love Kelly all day long. I love R. Kelly. But he is on my Deadpool list, so I do want him to die. So. You know, a lot of a lot of comedians wow. use this song. Um, I don't see nothing wrong with a bump and grind mm -hmm. as comedy, and I like I, you know, we all think of it, it's like my mind is telling me no, but my body's my telling me yes. Is. Like you let a young girl get you ready, <laughs> and then you're just doing it, and you see nothing wrong with it. Yes, there's something wrong with it. <laughs> well, you don't fuck minors. I mean, that's why he's in jail. Yeah, I know. I watched the series. <laughs> oh, yeah. I mean, but here again, those parents need to go to jail, too. Who going to let their little daughter go to R. Kelly house? The, you I know mean, what? The, the proof yeah. is in the pudding if, already. If you went after a young ass Jackson's Aaliyah, house. you need your ass whooped. Whoa. How old was Aaliyah? How old was Aaliyah? I mean, when how much she you got with R. Kelly? Like 17. I think she was 15, 17. Was she 17 or 16? I think 16. It's, she was 16. It doesn't Regardless, matter. she wasn't of age, and he matter. was already in his 20s. I mean, 20s, we were all minors who lied to men who slept with adults. Well, here's I know, the, guys, no. that's that's we we all were minors that slept with adults, right? I was. Well, I'm, you know, I'm not going to incriminate the people. You tried. <laughs> no, I'm not either. But I'm saying, like, I lied. I lied to adults when I was younger. Like, oh yeah, I'm 18 for sure. Hey, but you know it what? Doesn't, that's, it, that's you I at the time. Never, you were I would never age. come back later and be I like, can't oh, Google you at that age. You could Google Aaliyah. You know how old she was. Yeah. He knew how old she <laughs> was. They got yeah. married. They got married. It's even worse. So her parents, her parents need their ass whooped. And after that, as a father, I would know, you know, back in the day, you messed with this young ass girl and you got married to her. Yeah, I'm not sending you, I'm not sending my daughter to R. Kelly's house for a weekend. I'm sorry. Okay, I know that he has a little kid's problem. 
Not so if your daughter can sing and R. Kelly yeah. says, hey, I'm going to make your daughter a millionaire and I'm in love with her, I'm going to like Mariah Carey old man her and then he's like, yeah. fine, here, for First a million all, dollars, have my the kid. the L word, he catching the fade right off top. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. Love her, you, lo- you love my daughter. Hold on. <laughs> See, no, no, no. no. <laughs> Swing it on him. Okay, right. this is going to sound from the old white guy. Jerry Seinfeld, didn't he have like a contract with uh, his girlfriend's parents? She was like 16. Yes. Yeah. The babysitter. Yes. And not, he yes. never, uh, he kept his show, didn't lose anything. See, no that's, me too, no nothing. See, well, that's the problem. Well, he didn't agree. keep him locked up in that's, a room with no food. No, no. Know? He also and, didn't pee on her. As far that's as what I'm know. saying. <laughs> but see, that's the problem. Even, <laughs> even Elvis Presley and, and there have been several yeah, others. Jerry Lee Lewis. Lewis. And, yes. Yeah. They've all talked uh, about Woody minors. Allen. Yeah, well, Michael Presley Jackson married Day. a minor. It yeah. was the same we thing. also forgot about the piss on you part. I forgot. Yeah. <laughs> How do you forget? That's every time I hear R. Kelly, I just think of piss. I'm, I just think of Dave Chappelle's. I'm going to piss. I don't. On you. I just don't understand the whole sexual part about that. Like you inside the girl guts, you giving it to her bad. You just get up like, yo, let me pee on you real quick. Like, go to the restroom to come know. back, bro. It's still going to be up. Just Dude, Patrice right. O'Neal. He was a Patrice O'Neal when he's like, that's how I found out I had diabetes. My bitch yeah. was like, it tastes yeah. sweet. It tastes yeah. like birthday cake. And I was like, oh, my God. Nah. Uh, I, don't, I don't even think I could pee on somebody who I love or I'm in the middle of doing some stuff with. I mean, you're going to get back into it after you do that? That's nice. Yeah. Are we going to do yeah. that on the bed? Are we going to do that in yeah. the shop? Like, like are, you gonna, yes. are you expecting not to get a kiss for the rest yes. of the day or something? The different strokes from different folks. Different strokes from different folks. Kink shame here. Oh, um, no, kink shame. Right. Hey, no, I'm not <laughs> shaming. No, if y'all, y'all want to get peed on, that's all up to you. I just can't see the feeling of it. You know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> I just sitting there like, give me a golden shower. Like, hold on. <laughs> well, you <laughs> hold on, man. Like, where are we gonna do this in the bed? We sleep here. You know, like, <laughs> where was our kill? Yeah, we was in a hallway or a what? Slip and slide. <laughs> maybe, he had, maybe he had a wet room. Maybe he had a wet room, and it was like just a room. Man, for, R. Kelly does that. Well, I can't. I can't vouch for him. It's pissed me off because I used to love all the songs. I, I knew he went wrong when he did Trapped in the Closet, Volume 18. <laughs> you that didn't like Trapped in the Closet? That was by I far like his the first, best shit. I liked the first four, four, but after it went to like 27, I was like, yeah. you know what? He's gone too far. When the Isley Brothers was pretty sick, and then after that, I was like, what the fuck? Yeah, it's Mr. Fun. Biggs whooped his ass a few times. Get out of the closet. <laughs> That's All right. Yeah. Um, so we uh, have you listened to the podcast, sir? I have listened to a few of the videos. I haven't been able to listen to a full podcast yet. But um, okay. well, I've seen the ones that you posted only about maybe six minutes, I believe. Six minutes. You've only or seen six, six or minutes ten. or the ones are? <laughs> the ones that I see, um, when Danielle sent me the first, first part, I saw it was only like 10 minute um, podcast. Is that how you break it down to 10 minutes or no? a whole hour no. or something? No, yeah, um, it's a whole hour. So if it's not a whole hour, I need to look at a different link so I could get the rest of them because I did enjoy the ones that I did watch. I think you like got your the guys clips whole, on the website, maybe. You guys' yeah. whole thing that you guys got going are pretty good. Well, and like, um, that. I'm on, I'm gonna definitely support it for sure, you know. Well, so since uh, – but, yeah, we do a whole hour. So if you go on our YouTube channel, it will be there. Um, so we do this thing called – it's pretty famous uh, worldwide. <laughs> um, inside the comic studio. Uh-huh. Oh, she she kind of said she it. Did, okay. did. I did, I did. Say we it. didn't hear it. I'm satisfied. Oh, brilliant. Oh, brilliant, brilliant, brilliant. What do you want me to fucking say? Jesus. Oh, yeah. I need that on my ringtone. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I'm ready to listen to me. All right. Um, so, before we get into our very famous bit, uh, plug any social media you have, any websites, uh, plug your album, stuff like that. Well, you know, I don't really have um, a lot going on at the moment. 2020 really pushed me down. But if you want to follow me and laugh at I am underscore ghostwriter on Twitter, you will be able to get some jokes in with me. That's pretty much what I have for right now. Uh, we're working on a lot of stuff this year. So if you want to be informed for more, you just you can find it out because I will be plugging it out on there also. Oh, and then what about the uh, uh, sort of digression? The production company, what is it? Uh, Beast at Mines? Beast at Mines, yes. My, my cousin going to probably slap the hell out of me for not putting it on. Uh, Beast at Mines, we have, um, we're not only just doing music, you know, we got the t-shirts going on now, production. My cousin had a dream from a very long time. He's been trying to push this and it's just been, you know, gravel every time. We haven't really been able to push the car yet. And uh, this year was really the day that we're going to push it, but it's really just me and him giving the efforts in and everything else. And you really find out that 
you become more successful, the smaller your circle is because people are not going to help you. They're just going to talk like they're going to help you mm -hmm. and not push with you. And that's like one of the things that we found out the hardest. But with our mindsets and not being able to, because me, I have a motto. I'm not going to quit till my heart stops. As long as my heart is beating, I'm going to keep pushing no matter what because I can't say that I can't do nothing when I'm dead. But while I'm alive, I can say that I'm going to make it. So you talk everything into existence. And uh, we're going to get beast at minds pushing very soon. All right. Uh, Sharon. Uh, check me out on I Am Big Poetry podcast. I have, I do, like, um, like Nick said, I do have the um, interview with the uh, American Got Talent um, Golden Buzzer winner, um, Brandon Leak. Check it out. Uh, yeah. All right. Super. Uh, uh, Rob. <laughs> Uh, get my side project, Stand Up Dad's podcast, comes out every Sunday. I do that with my buddy Mike. Uh, we talk about parenting stuff. And also, we have a new website. It what? Is stand up dads.com. Stand up dads.com. We've got not a whole hell of a lot on there. There's a blog for parents and all that bullshit. Uh, check it out. <laughs> bullshit. All right. And <laughs> oh, Danny okay. came back just okay. in time. Danny. I know, right? Uh, you can find me at Radchick Forever um, on Instagram. Change your shirt. Venmo. Plug in wherever you want to find me. <laughs> she, she's, she's, she's going swimming after this. Oh, oh. I can't wait. Yeah, not, <laughs> not, in the, not in the river in an actual pool, so that's good. Yeah, we don't have to worry about her dying. I can swim just fine. No, You'll but know you, when I want to kill myself. Yeah, I, I hope not. Um, <laughs> uh, follow me on Twitter at the Big Nick J. Okay, Inside the Comic Studio is brought to you by Seattle Gummy Company. When you need to be alert and focus fast, Mocha Shots, high energy gummies work five times faster than coffee and at half the price. Combination of active ingredients improves focus, enhances cognitive performance, and reduces the jittery side effects of caffeine so you can get shit done. I want to do a little kind of experiment and see if it helps with the sex. So I'll get back to you guys on that one. <laughs> Bam. Um, Let's see. Uh, vitamin B complex boosts performance. It's convenient. Take any time. Only five grams of sugar per gummy. Use promo code GAG15 and you save 15% off your entire order. Let's get into the comic studio. So we ask all uh, comics, um, and I'll probably change it up a bit since you also do rap because I'm curious about some of the <laughs> questions too. Um, we ask everyone the same five questions. So first question is first joke that landed well. Uh, one of my first jokes that landed well, mm -hmm. uh, talking about dating a big girl, because uh, <laughs> being a big guy and a big girl, you know, people were sitting in the audience trying to figure this out. And I told them, like, I can't drive my Camaros on 22s because the bottom of it would be scraping against the ground all the time when we get in. And she'll blame it on the 22s for being low profile. I said, no, we 2,200 pounds in this bitch. <laughs> and we can't keep it moving. <laughs> and that pretty, much, that pretty much knocked out a lot of the crowd, which had me concerned because that was just the beginning. And I was like, these last jokes better be funnier than that. <laughs> because the guy, the guy in the front row almost had a heart attack laughing so hard. I thought I wanted to stop and tell him, like, get some water, man. Some more coming. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, second yeah. question. Favorite thing about your local comedy scene? Oh, man. As far as it goes, like we talked about Jerry Law earlier, Mario Hodge, um, Trev also, um, comedian Jarrell. They're all local. Jay Rich, they're all local comedians, and they're all down to earth. And that's what I like to see. Like, they can really help you move as a unit as people that are coming up. Because, I mean, a lot of people are trying to be comedians. And a lot of people that are trying to be comedians may, may not do well their first time. And they might, you know, drop the whole thing. And they might be the next Dave Chappelle. You never know. You know, but these guys are really keep your motivation up, you know. And they keep you motivated to push harder. You mess up, get back on the horse, and keep pushing. So I like the fact that all those guys are locals and I ran across them once, you know, in my life. All right. Uh, so the opposite of that, what's one thing you dislike or would like to see changed in your local scene? Uh, some of the comedians that made it out, I would like to see them come back and pull some of the um, amateurs in. You know, a lot of them do help a lot of people that are already kind of in the scene. You know, it's like the back buddy system that they got going on. But I like to see a lot of comedians that have made it out of the uh, area come back and grab an amateur and push them up sort of like how kevin hart you know went back and got his classic cub boys you know those people that he grew up with and stuff people that he came across and he just you know gave them life you know i would like to see more of that happen in the comedy scene yeah 
so everybody's not on their own, you know. He should have Big J on one of his shows because those two came up together. Yeah. yeah. But, you know, Kevin Hart just fucking eclipsed Big J's career. <laughs> <laughs> different crowd, different kind of comedy. That's true. Yeah, true. Um, uh, favorite local comedian? Uh, favorite local comedian? I would say Mark Curry, to be real. I grew up with hanging with Mr. Cooper on the TV shows. That's pretty much one of the biggest ones that made it out, you know? Mark, Mark Curry? Curry local? He was in Oakland? Mark, no. Yeah, he's from Mark Oakland. Curry's from he's Oakland, Oakland, man. No shit. <laughs> I didn't know Mark that. Mark Curry's from Oakland, man. Come yeah, on, he had the Warriors on the, He had yeah. his Warriors on a TV show yep. all the time, man. He put down for the talent. This whole beginning of this sitcom no. was Oakland. <laughs> no, you, you pick a different comic that is local, that you know that's more realistic. <laughs> Mark fucking Curry. What do you mean? What do you mean it's not realistic? Oh, he's, he's still out there. Hang with Mr. Cooper, is, that's the man. <laughs> I used to watch that show. But he's I'm still out there. there. He's right, still right. out there. Yeah. I didn't like hanging with Mr. Cooper. I liked the other one what? by um Oh no, no, no. Hold on, hold on. Who's the who's the, was it? Um it was Rock? No. The Rock? No, no. Um I think his name was just like D Rock or something. Fuck. Yeah. Good job <laughs> he played there. a he played a janitor. Does anybody know what I'm talking about? He played a janitor at a school. No. He always had like a powerful fucking thing to say <laughs> at the end of every episode i kind of get what you're saying man i just can't figure out the show like or the show. person son of a bitch <laughs> i'll figure it out before this is over because it's killing me okay uh <laughs> right. lastly advice to new comedians oh man as a person that's still getting his feet wet my advice for you is if you think you're funny keep pushing you know what I'm saying everything you say is not going to be funny to everybody else and you just take that as a lesson but never quit you know what i'm saying you gotta keep pushing the best thing to do is practice in front of a mirror. That's what I did. That was the advice that was given to me. And get out there and have fun. The main part is have fun. Don't try too hard. When you try too hard, you fuck up. And your delivery is the most important thing as a comedian. It's how you deliver it. I can come on stage and be like, what's up? You know, then I can come on stage like, what's up, motherfuckers? And, you know, you don't get a funny laugh out of that. You got to come out. The first 10 seconds of how your presence is, is going, what's going to make your night go by? Because they're going to laugh at you for being goofy as it is, you know? And if you say some real shit, as a matter of fact, don't put no real shit in your comedy because you might be sad about that shit and you say some real shit and if people laugh at you, it's going to make you feel some type of way. <laughs> so, I mean, that's the best of it. I mean, like, I told, I said the joke about being big and everything else. Everyone's like, ah, yeah, you fat ass. I'm like, hey, all right. You ain't got to go that far. <laughs> you know? Like a lot of my friends, I said in my comedy, I know you watched it too. They call me fat ass aunt. And I'm thinking to myself, like, yo, um, who else named Anthony here that you got to call me fat ass in front of aunt, you know, to get <laughs> to, to, to describe. Like if you just say, yo, Anthony's here, they're not going to know who that is. You got to say, oh, fat ass. And, oh, I know who that is. You know, like <laughs> <laughs> you got to be prepared, you know. But I mean, always push and believe in yourself no matter what. The devil will always show you that you nothing. You got to just remember you are somebody and keep pushing. Ooh, Don't let nobody tell church. you you can't do something, you know? Yeah, I bring it to church. Lightweight. <laughs> then the rest is just the rest it is might all fall, bad. It might fall down <laughs> over us. It's, but, uh, you know. it's more sin than, you know, good. <laughs> I don't. I don't think I do. Well I know at my pastor see this right now. He's like, "Boy, we got to talk. <laughs> <laughs> you need some Jesus." <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, I cannot fucking find that one. God okay. damn it. Then be quiet. Can I just say one thing? I had a Shut psychic reading no. then. No. I had a psychic reading then, and I know you guys all love that shit, right? Oh, boy. Psychic. Oh, God. <laughs> what do you, this, hold on, hold on. Before you get into it, Anthony, what are your thoughts on astrology? You know, <laughs> well, you know about. <laughs> <laughs> That's all you have to do is laugh. I, I, <laughs> I, I don't expect I guys to like it. zodiacs, though, man. I even said in my comedy, like, they'd be like, oh, you a Taurus. You like to get money. Bitch, don't we all like to get money? We'd be broke without it. Bam. <laughs> I mean, I don't understand the whole thing. Like, oh, Capricorns make the best sex partners. Scorpio's the freakiest. I'm like, look, I'm a Taurus, and I'm freaky as hell. So if it's beyond that, I don't know what the uh, hell is going down. I only got one rule. Don't touch my ass. That's it. There you go. That's not so, freaky. So, I mean, I could, I could say that that's beyond freaky as it is. Like, we do some shit, you know, um... Not gonna put me and my girl on the spot like that. But I'm just saying, we, we, <laughs> Scorpios ain't just a freak. Like, it just, love just goes play. crazy. <laughs> it just goes crazy to me when people use zodiacs for to to break down somebody. Like, okay, okay look, 
No one asked you for your thoughts. Anyways. <laughs> <Absolutely>. I, <laughs> I believe I did. <laughs> but anyways, go I'm just, hey. one, I'm just gonna share. <laughs> okay, share it. One thing. That's all I'm gonna say. She okay. said, so you know, she said, uh, I feel like when you're gonna be when you're forty two, you're gonna be signing a big contract for comedy. And I didn't tell her I did stand up comedy. And I said, Okay, thank you. I mean she said a lot more, but that's all I'm well, I mean, you speak that into years existence, ago. and I hope she's right. Fuck you! I'm 38, asshole. <laughs> what? <laughs> what? What? What have you? What? She's on 42. Big things are gonna happen to me. Well, you got four that? years to prepare. Four years. So I guess I can't kill <laughs> myself this year. So you know, I'll be around. So I'm 42. <laughs> but uh, <Damn>. yeah. <laughs> you confuse me sometimes. Hey, I promoted I the podcast too. It's, it's no disrespect to anybody that feels zodiac. So I'm just saying it's not for me. And hopefully, 42 comes around, you make a big contract, and don't forget none of us on the show, because I need a deal, too. Yeah, We're going to get you into some fucking astrology, you guys, all of you. Oh, I, I speak all that Zodiac shit for some money. Um, <laughs> see? See? I'll get you to believe for a dollar eighty nine a minute. I don't know if I believe in it, but I make a routine. Like I said, it ain't selling your soul. It's just it's going to the Ooh, money. <laughs> you should do the, uh, like, you could be the next Miss Cleo. You could do, like, phone Me? sex and horoscope. Yeah, you. No, I can't read. There you go. No. Yes, I don't you want to can. Hey, you can bullshit. Majority of people you wouldn't have to read. Just tell them some bullshit to tell me. I believe in right. it, though. I believe you in know, it. You know so, what you need to do is get a bunch of old newspapers and just find their astrology sections and just like randomly pick them out and go, oh, let's see. And then, <laughs> and I guarantee you, they go, oh, you know me so well. You got to change and, the words a little bit now because Google will bust your ass. Okay. Your ass. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. Get let's the old do newspapers. this then. Next podcast, I don't know who our guest is. Next podcast, I'm going to ask you guys like one or two questions and then I'm going to give each three of you an astrology reading. A, a quick one, a very short one. And then you guys can let me know if I was close. Uh-huh. Okay. To, is it happening? Or, well, okay, cool. Don't cool. you worry about it till next week. But just <laughs> remember, definitely. just remember, my moon rests in Jupiter's. Um, you don't know shit about Equinox. anything. <laughs> well, I'm a red moon. Well, that. all right, let's let's end it there. Yeah, the I'm show. I'll figure I'm out the super show. Excited, probably. assholes. <laughs> you are. No, it'll be good as long as you have coattails long enough for me to hold on to. We'll be fine. <laughs> 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 Those aren't coattails. Um, <laughs> <laughs> all right well anthony thank you for coming on this was a treat you guys all stay safe nice thank you. Right. you thanks ma'am all right. Later. see you around <laughs> <Hey>. <laughs>